Hi, my name is Eric, and this is the High Power Cycles Crystallite Controller. It's made exclusively for High Power Cycles, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it, because there's a lot of connections on here that aren't used when you first get a kit, so it can be a little confusing. First of all, this is made by Crystallite, but it's exclusively for High Power Cycles, so it's not something you're gonna get off the shelf from Crystallite. As you can see, it's got an aluminum container here with heat sinks all over. This is the 6,000 watt version. The 4,000 watt version is about this long from here to here. So it's a little bit smaller. You don't need that much heat sink, so that much power in there. And then the 8,000 watt version or 7,000 watt and above actually have heat sinks that go above here. So it's just a little bit taller to keep it cool. On the back of the controller, you're gonna see a key for what all the connections are. You can see they're numbered just like the connections. So I'll go through the connections so you see exactly what you're working with here. Starting off with the motor connections. These are gonna be your phase wires. There's three of them. You can see they're here. Sometimes you won't be able to see the colors, but if you peel back the shrink wrap a little bit, you'll see that there's a yellow, blue, and a green color behind here. So it's a little hard to get to sometimes. I'm gonna peel it back here just so you can see, but you want to make sure that you line up the colors with the correct corresponding colors on the motor. So you might have to peel back the shrink wrap. As you can see here, there is yellow, blue, and green. Once you've determined the colors, you can put the shrink back and then heat it up with a lighter or a hot air gun if you have one, and it'll go back to normal. The next wire you need to worry about is the hull sensor. That goes to the motor as well, and it tells the motor what direction to go when you throttle it. So if you don't have this wire on a controller that you got for an e-bike, it means you have a sensorless controller. Sensorless controllers are way less efficient than the censored ones. They're not gonna be as smooth on the takeoff, and it's just a way better experience to have this. So if you're getting an e-bike with a hub motor, you wanna get something that's censored. Sensorless is just old technology at this point. The last wire going to the motor is this one. It's a little two pin temperature sensor. It's really important to have a temperature sensor so you don't overheat your hub motor, especially if you're trying to push it with a six, seven or 8,000 watt system. So this is really important to have. If you do have this wire and you pair it up with a cycle analyst version 3.14, then you can actually see the temperature on your screen display and it'll be shown at live time. So when you hit 90 degrees Celsius, that's usually when the sensor will actually cut the motor back and limit the power. And then 130 degrees Celsius will turn the motor off altogether to prevent anything from overheating and damaging your motor. So it's really important to have this plugged in and programmed properly. After the motor wires, since these are the three wires that go to the motor, you're looking at the power wire. So this go, of course goes to the battery. This is an XT90 connection, which is more than enough to handle even our 8,000 watt systems. So we highly recommend this. We have the ones that have the pre-charge built in. So if you plug it into the controller here, it's not gonna send a big spark. If you don't have that pre-charge in on some cheaper controllers, it'll cause a big spark when you plug in your battery to a dead controller and that's because the battery itself has a voltage that's way higher than the controller. So if you plug a battery into this, instantly it wants to charge up the MOSFETs inside of this controller, and that'll create a good spark. So eventually you'll end up destroying your connection. That's why we have the pre-charges, and that's why we use super high-end XT90s. The next wire is your cycle analyst wire. So this is gonna be a six pin JST connection. As you can see here, there's six pins in there. Um, this goes to your cycle analyst or your screen display. There's a few different options for those, but you're looking at a version 2.4 or the version 3.14 in most cases. And uh, of course, the screen display will show you everything you need to know about your bike, including your speed, how fast you're going, how much power you're using, how much uh, battery you have left, and a bunch of other things like that. This wire, almost always covered with red shrink wrap and a little stubby wire, is going to be your on-off switch. So you can plug this into a little on-off switch or use a little looper. 
because it's basically just an open connection that needs to be closed in order for the controller to turn on. This is the throttle wire. It's a three pin connection. In some of the older controllers that high power cycles used, it was a JST style connection like this, still with three pins, but we changed it over to this waterproof connection. So that'll help you if you get stuck in the rain and you don't want your connections to get wet. This little connection here is a three pin brake cutoff. So this will be connected to your brakes if you have it. It turns off the bike or the power to the motor as soon as you connect one of these. So the middle pin is the signal. Then you have two pins on the outside that go to either brake. And if you connect the loop, then it will turn off the motor in case you accidentally whiskey throttle it. I personally disconnect mine because I don't like the slight delay that if you hit the brake and you try to throttle at the same time, like if you're on a hill or if you're trying to do a burnout, it kind of just messes me up off road. So I usually disconnect this, but it is something that's good to have uh, and know about if you are a beginner or if you want to just kind of get used to the bike. This little three pin connection is your three speed switch. So with all of our controllers, they're programmed to have a low, medium and high power. In this case, with the 6,000 watt system, the low power is about 15 miles an hour, about 20 at the high end. Then your medium is going to be about 35, 40, and then full speed, which is around 60 if you're running a 6,000 watt system. My 8,000 watt bike over there actually has a top speed of almost 70. So top power on this would allow my bike to go 70 and then it just limits it from there. This final connection here is actually just for USB programming. So it's something that you're not going to use. We do all the programming at High Power Cycles. So you usually just want to tuck that away and make sure it doesn't get wet. There's a bunch of little contacts in there. So sometimes I'll just put some electrical tape in there if it's exposed to the weather or whatever and uh, let, it, let it be. All right, so these controllers actually have the newest technology. It's pure sine wave which is a few steps up from what controllers were on the market a couple of years ago. Uh, Square Wave was the original technology and it basically means that inside the controller all the connections just make like hard angles. So when the electricity is going through it has to hit a hard angle and turn. With Sine Wave it copies the electrical flow a little bit so the connections just have a nice linear flow and then a pure sine wave copies it even more accurately. So if you're getting a controller for a hub motor system or even a mid drive, you're gonna want a pure sine wave controller because those are the most efficient, uh, best motor controllers on the market. It's gonna keep your motor a little bit cooler. It's going to run a little bit faster and it's give you more power, of course. As you can see, there's mounting holes here you can use those if you want with like zip ties around a frame tube or you can drill into the frame and put a screw through there and of course it's the same style on the other side hopefully that answers all your questions you might have about controllers for high power cycles units or even any e-bike in general again you want a pure sine wave controller if possible this is a really great setup because it has a big frame with nice heat sinks so the controller itself doesn't even get hot even when my 6,000 watt motor is busting it and getting as hot as uh, I don't even want to touch it. Um, this is nice and warm basically. So that's about the extent of it. It'll get a little warm when my motor is so hot I don't even want to touch it. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more e-bike videos and epic test rides.